things. So we're going to walk through and show the food storage that I have in my tiny house. I have room for a lot more than this, but um, right now what we're trying to do is consolidate, make sure we have the food storage that we need and not have a lot of fluff because this is how we eat every single day when we live out here. And so we're going to go ahead and give you the tour. So, yeah, this is my first time visiting Julie at her off-grid cabin. As I myself don't live in a tiny home, so I am just totally impressed by all the organization and how much she actually has in here as far as storage goes. So, is, we ready? Yep. Okay. Okay, so the first thing that I have is this set of stairs. And the reason it's a ladder is so that it doesn't take up a really big, big footprint. And it is also made out of uh, lumber that I milled myself. Essential Mountain Homestead is the channel that I show that on. But it was deep enough and tall enough that we could put canned goods in it. And so we have canned goods, we have some dry goods, and I like things to be personalized by my family. So you'll see that I do have some wood burning into the stairs and some of it is not poetic and beautiful, but uh, this cabin is meant to be lived in. Right now we have a lot of toiletries. We have underwear for the kids. We have uh, bathroom type things in this shelf, but we could pack the whole thing with food storage and we have done that before. And what we stacked into here was canned goods. So, so in one of our Pepper Preppers live over on Facebook, we talked about how we like to display our flowers, that you can have a large five gallon or two gallon uh, bucket of your flowers, but that if you have a pantry, it's really nice to have smaller containers that are very attractive. This is my Elmira wood burning stove. It's a fire view, flame view. I never remember which one it is, but we use this for all of our heating and cooking in our big house before we were in a tiny house. And I now use it as a work surface. The propane attachment does work and this is how we do all of our cooking in the winter. We have an outdoor stove during the summer when we want to keep heat out. And this is where I keep all my jars. Two of them I got on Amazon. I was happy to find them. The rest I found in secondhand stores and um, they just work really well. They tip for easy um, pouring and I really like them. And then behind that I have a little cardboard box that's full of all my cooking oils. So all of these are back here. They stay out of the way for when I'm baking and I can just pull out the ones that I need. This is the warming oven and it's where we keep the few grains that we can eat. We can eat sprouted rice and we have dates, we have tea, we have some noodles and coffee for my husband and some recipes. So we make use of every single inch of space. Down. Okay guys, so this is probably my favorite part of Julie's food storage. She's got all of these mason jars connected to this board above and got a lot of dry goods stored in here. This is just an absolutely beautiful way to uh, display your food storage. And she's got different sizes here depending on what she's storing here. And so she's got little spices over here in the little jars and then they graduate up to bigger jars so just an incredibly beautiful way to store your food storage and then we've got baskets up above here oh. with additional storage so really making use of every inch possible basket here not a whole lot in there but room for growth okay so this is most of my dry goods and my vinegar we also keep some toiletries up here and they are in boxes so that it holds related items together and this is the bulk of my dry goods storage but you saw I have space here to improve upon this basket here this basket here is mostly empty, so I could move some of my dry goods over here if if I wanted <clears throat> to eliminate the shelf and, and build something in. This is my dishwashing station. Okay, so this is the dishwashing station right here. So wash, rinse, and then she has additional storage down below here. So hidden behind these curtains to make things attractive so that things stay clean, things stay beautiful. So she has really optimized every inch of her space. Okay. So even more food storage is here stored underneath the bench in Julie's dining room. Uh, and you can see that there is room for more. It's not only is there food storage, but there's dry goods storage, there's batteries, schoolwork. And you can see, looking at it, that even though this is a tiny space, 
being uh, efficient, organized, and you can really optimize your space and really pack a lot in here. On this side of the bench over here, she's got root storage. So things like potatoes and onions store well, being down here low and cool. Onions. And... Oh. Yeah, we store a lot and of potatoes. Oh. And lots of potatoes. You can get real creative with your storage ideas here and like you see, plenty of room even though it's a tiny space. Well, there's our cozy cabin this morning. My bed is already made. Paige is still asleep. Paige is still asleep. Kai has her hair brushed. We had our live show yesterday and I'm surprised we don't have a dirtier house, but when your house is this little, it doesn't take very long to clean it up. So, it looks like I need to wash our mirror, but other than that, we're good to go. That fan is just zipping, and I do have the heat going through the bench. It took a little while to get things drafting this morning because I wasn't using very much wood. We, It does turn out with this batch box, you do need to have a significant amount of wood in there to feed the coals and to keep the fire going um, so that it runs efficiently. Now once you have a good bed of coals going then you don't have to do that. Then you're putting in small sticks. But until you get a good bed of coals it, do it just doesn't seem to run as, as fast and burn as efficiently.